Hello and welcome back to the channel. In the previous lecture, we have seen all about the scalar functions which are there in Neo4j. But let's shift our focus to the aggregating function. So this is like very short lecture because all of you already have an idea what are really the aggregating functions are. And we use them in any programming language out there. So like we already know some of the mathematical functions that we generally use in a day to day life, which is like average, max, min, sum, etc, etc. So I'll just keep it simple. And also this will be a good practice for you and you can figure out where you can fit those in your analytic cipher queries. So as you already know that aggregating functions will take multiple values as an input and convert them and aggregate them as per our requirement. So like if you already know what is average. So average function will take all the numerical input and it will give us the average value among those inputs. So it's very simple. And then we have the collect. So let's talk about them one by one. So without wasting any time, let's jump onto the Neo4j desktop and start querying these all functions. Okay, so I have already kicked off the Neo4j desktop. So just open it and let's open our recommendation system, which is provided by Neo4j itself. So this data set has like the data related to the actors, movies, directors, and their genre. So like, let's talk about the user here. So as you can see in the user and between the user and the movie, we have the rating, which is there in the rated relationship. So in our graph, there are so many users and like movies and the rating. So let's talk about how we can use the average to get the average rating in our whole graph. So for that, it's very simple. You have to just give the user and we have the relationship is rated and the direction is left to right. So I'll just give rated here and the variable for the relationship because we have to get hold of the rating and then it's very simple. So let's talk about the movie now. And after that, let's have like the average here. So in return, we'll be having the average function and we got to calculate the average of our dot the rating. So just you have to make sure that you're giving the correct property name. Otherwise it will give nothing. So I'll just return it. And as you can see in our whole data set, average rating a particular user given to the movie is like 3.5436. So this is the average number in the whole graph. So this is not the ideal. This is like a dummy data. So in the real world scenarios, this might be different as well. So it's up to your use case where this average function is useful in your analytics queries. So this was the first one. The next one is the collect function. So like collect will return a list which contains the values which are returned by an expression. So let's say we have 10 nodes and on 10 nodes we have different actors and their names. So if you want to get hold of the names and convert them into lists so that we can maybe iterate over it or maybe do some other analytics on top of it, then collect will be a very good function. Let's talk about it with some simple example. So let's say we have 10 actors here. So we'll give like with n limit 10. So right now our return consists of 10 nodes, right? So this 10 nodes, let's say if you want to hold of name of those actors in a list. So collect will help you with that. So we'll give like with collect of the name which is nothing but and dot name as the name list so here we are giving the alias to our list and we'll just return the name list and there you have it we have like the list where we have the list of the names of actors and we have since used the limit here we got the 10 values but if you want to fetch each element of this list you can directly give it by giving the index here as you can see we got the first one then we got the next one and so on. So this is like very similar to what we have in the Python or any other programming language. So to manipulate the list, we can use either index or iterate over that using the unwind operation. Unwind we have already seen in the previous lecture and how it works. But collect is nothing but an aggregating function. So for our 10 nodes, it gave us a one record where it combined all the name of the actors. So similarly for exploratory analysis of your graph collect will be a good option. So let's say we have to find the combination of properties in between few nodes. So let's say if you have a movie node and you want to get hold of the movies 
where where the release date is duplicate so for that purpose we can easily do that using collect operation so let's say if you have a movie property here then we will hold off with the property name so we need like the release date the end dot release date here and we will just collect all those nodes so we'll collect the nodes as maybe like the list and after that we can directly give the size of the list size we already seen that the if the size of the list is greater than one which means that that particular release date has appeared more than once in the data set so i'll just give like where the size of the list which means that the number of component present in the list for a particular release date is greater than one then we have to get those results so it gives the error that with clause will expect some alias so here the release will be alias here so i'll just give this so as you can see we got the set of movies here we have given the limit as one because we want to only see one set of records so here as you can see all the movies will be having the same release date which is 22.11.1995 so this will be common for all like 22.11.995 and for all those the release date is common so this is very helpful for your exploratory analysis to find out the duplicate nodes in your graph so this is how we can use the collect to have the exploratory analysis on top of your data set to find out the duplicate values or the nodes where we have like a group of properties which are same so this is all about the collect i have spent a lot of time on collect because it will be like a very useful addition to your data analysis so the next one is the count count is pretty simple one like it gets the number of values or the rows present in your return records so if you want to get the count of the nodes so here we have the actor nodes here so if we take like the return count of n we'll get the node count of the actors but here so if you want to get the distinct count of any nodes or maybe the relationship or the pattern as well you can ensure that by using the distinct here so you can just give distinct count so it will be similar in this case but for many cases when you are defining a path which consists of a node and the relationship then the count will be messed up without distinct so you have to make sure that you are using distinct to get the unique count of your nodes or the relationships so then you have the max and the min functions which give us either the maximum value or the minimum value from your list of numerical values it it could be integer or the float value so here as you can see we already have an example where we have dealt with the average so here we can directly get the max of the rating which is present in the data set which is the 5 rating so that's why the minimum rating will be 0.5 so we have the rating from like 0.5 to 5 so here as you can see we got the minimum rating of 0.5 as well so this is how you can use this mathematical function and here as you can see we also have the sum function here so like similarly you have the sum function to get the sum of the numerical values so here we got sum of all the ratings it does not make any sense but it totally depends on your use case to identify the sum is the preferred function to use in your queries so there are like other functions as well to to calculate the standard deviation as well as the percentile count so this will be a exercise for you these are not used as often in your analytics queries but it will be a good exercise for you so the percentile count will returns a percentile of a value over a group using linear interpolation then we have the percentile disk which will return the nearest float value to a given percentile over a group using a rounding method and we have the standard deviation so we already know what is a standard deviation so returns standard deviation for like a given value or a group of sample of population but in the, our next function it will return the standard deviation of given value for an entire population so this will be exercise for you i don't want to go into more details on this these are pretty simple and an easy mathematical functions to help you in your analytics queries so i hope you understood what really are the aggregating functions and how you can include them in your cipher queries So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.